Hi everyone, Rory at Clodden Painting Studio back again um, with the final video in the Box to Battlefield Hobby Basics series for uh, Perry French 1812 to 1815 line infantry. I'm going to look at mounting um, the flag, the colours, um, as the final step today. Um, I'm not using the ones supplied in the box, they are for... 1815 and the Waterloo campaign. Um, I'm hopeful to get uh, some games in for either um, Russia, uh, Germany or Battle for France. That's 1812, 1813, 1814. Um, the sheet of flags in front of me is a third party one. It's from GMB Designs. And we're going to look at how to um, cut this out with a piece of paper, um, mount it on the flag, and hopefully uh, drape it in such a way that it looks like it's flowing in the wind. So I've got a fresh scalpel blade um, in my hobby knife, I've got my metal ruler. Um, and there are some nice black lines for us to line up. And we're going to cut out the top one here. You can do this with scissors, but honestly, I'm going to get a better result with um, our scalpel blade. Here, we're not going all the way through. That's to free up the area um, where the flagpole will sit, where there is no um, tassels. Now we'll get the rest cut out. So the flag is cut out. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half to get our edges lined up as best as possible. Um, it is likely that it's not going to be perfect. And certainly once we put it around the flagpole that's just going to change things as well. But that's pretty close. Always take a second just to make sure your uh, writing is uh, the correct way up. Um, and then we'll sort of just test fit it around the pole. Um, now I've replaced the plastic flagpole from the set with a wire one, so it's a bit thinner. Um, that can affect the um, how this will uh, settle. Obviously you've got a lot of space there for um, a wider flagpole if you need it before you get uh, onto the fringed area. So, with it on our pole there, um, I'm going to get some uh, simple PVA glue. Not much to this, we want to try and get right up to the edges. Was try to bring the far edges together first of all. And if you can get the corners lined up, as best as possible, you'll have less um, white showing. There will likely be a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to paint the edges to cover that up. So fairly flat, unrealistic looking. Um, we would have a bit of drape on the flagpole um, and the wind is going to affect this as well. So I'm just going to bring the shape of the flag 
into sort of an S. And as the glue dries, that's going to hold this in to this sort of shape. Back edge, I'm just going to bring the rear corner down a little to suggest the weight of the flag, the material of the flag just causing it to flop a little. We'll give the glue a bit of time to dry um, and then we will paint around the edge just to cover up that white area. A really good final step which you should always try and take the time to do. So here is the finished battalion and deployed in a column of attack as you might expect the French to be. Uh, 36 man strong block here and our six skirmishing uh, voltageurs. The flag border um, I finished with a couple of Vallejo colours, um, Japanese uniform, uh, that's the World War II Japanese uniform, um, and then some thin uh, lines of Iraqi sand just to help um, sort of define the border, make it look a bit more like the fringed pattern. That blends in pretty well. Um, the eagle-eyed amongst you might notice in um, our rear ranks there's only um, four grenadiers and eight voltageurs. Um, the reason being is that I would normally use a battalion of 24 on the table rather than 36. So um, that would be four grenadiers and four um, voltageurs. Um, and that means I can take four of these vultures and put them in another battalion. And with the magic of television, um, I will show you what I've done with those four vultures. And just like that, we have two battalions. Um, so I've got some additional uh, models brought in. Um, I had another uh, Perry uh, Eagle Bearer lying around. Um, this officer and drummer are from the Warlord Games, a uh, late French line infantry set. Um, and at the back, um, grenadiers made from um, Victrix Middle Guard, um, just painted um, up as line grenadiers. Um, there's some additional um, Perry line um, fusiliers that I had um, from various other projects lying around, so I've just added them in um, to make things up to two battalions um, and in actual fact sort of well on the way to a third and um, just with some of these extra numbers I had lying around. The next step will be um, to get some more um, command um, and flank companies painted up um, so that these eight can become part of a, a third battalion. Um, and then that's pretty much a, a, a black powder brigade for me. Um, and at the very least, I've got a very big, um, uh, sorry, a, a sizable uh, force for um, sharp practice or a, a skirmish game that I could make out of the models that I've painted so far, um, if we include the, the Voltagers um, in skirmish formation. And that brings a... Um, an end um, to this project. Um, oh, one final thing to point out about the um, second battalion's flag here. Um, that uh, comes from the Warlord 1812 to 1815 late French uh, line infantry set. Um, and uh, it is a plain white flag, and that's what the second battalion of a regiment would carry. Um, and note as well that the end of the flagpole um, doesn't have an eagle on it. Um, by this point, uh, 1812 onwards, um, 
regiments uh, were only allocated an eagle for the 1st Battalion. Um, in years past, um, each um, battalion would have, well, maybe not each, but certainly there were more eagles um, around. The project is at an end then. Um, I hope that this sort of step-by-step -step guide to um, building the box has been um, useful. Um, if it has been, please let me know um, and I'll consider doing something similar for some other um, sets in future. Um, taking a little break from uh, Napoleonics to do um, some other projects, but I will be back with a video soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.